<clears throat> what is your favorite season? Is it winter? Or maybe spring? Or summer! Everybody loves summer! Who doesn't love summer? I don't like summer. Neither do I! How about you? Maybe fall is your favorite season. <laughs> Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Earth Science. Today, we're going to be looking at Earth seasons. Why do we even have seasons on Earth? Why? Why can't we just have the same thing all year round? So we're going to dive deep into today's content. But before we begin, Mr. Price would always say drink a lot of water. So, mm. Ooh, I can feel solstice is coming. Mm. <laughs> Let's get started, gentlemen. Okay, so to understand Earth season much better, there are a few concepts that you guys need to understand. Probably a lot of you already know this, that there is an imaginary line that runs through the Earth, through the middle, from the North Pole to the South Pole. That line is called the Earth Axis. Okay, and that axis is just like a straight line from the North Pole to the South Pole. And that is what we have right here. Another important line also that you need to know, most of you already know, is the popular equator. And that equator is the horizontal guy that cuts the Earth horizontally and divides the Earth into Northern Hemisphere and Southern Hemisphere. There are a couple of few more important lines of latitude we're going to discuss more but i'm going to introduce you to some right now in this class as well so we just learned about the north pole and the south pole and the line connecting both poles is the earth's axis and we also discussed the equator dividing the earth into northern hemisphere and southern hemisphere another important line of latitude is the tropic of cancer and that's the value of that tropic of cancer is 23 and a half degrees we're going to get to that, why it is 23 and a half in a minute. Another important line also that runs across the earth is the Tropic of Capricorn. And one more, the Arctic Circle. And lastly, the Atlantic Circle. Now, these lines are important and we're just going to touch a little bit on them today. But we're going to go deeper when we get to our unit called Mapping sometimes in the future. So these are the lines I really want you guys to understand and their values as well, especially the tropics. When I mean tropics, I'm talking about Tropic of Cancer and Tropic of Capricorn. Both of them are 23 and a half degrees north and the other one is 23 and a half degrees south. Okay, so with that said, if, the, if it was an ideal world, um, the Earth axis should be seated on its elliptical orbit around the sun at an angle of 90 degrees, which means the straight line connecting the north and south pole will be perpendicular to the Earth's elliptical orbit around the sun. And it would look something like this. So which means the sun will always radiate directly to the equator and everywhere on Earth would receive same amount of heat, okay, with exactly half of the Earth receiving sunlight and the other half receiving, uh, let's say, darkness or in the night, which means half of the Earth is in, is in nighttime and half of the Earth is in the daytime. If it were so, then as the Earth revolves around the, uh, the sun, this is what we would have. At every point in time, half of the Earth would be seeing the sun, half would be seeing um, the dark side, which is night, and then uh, everywhere we receive equal heat. But you know that is not true. Sometimes we get cold here in the Northern Hemisphere in New York. Other times we get so hot, we want to just dive into the swimming pool or go to the beach. So why is the heat not equal all year round? Now this is because the Earth axis is not perpendicular. It is tilted. It is uh, bent a little, a little bit off. Okay, which means at some point it tilts the North Pole completely away from the sun or completely into the sun. And that angle of inclination is 23 and a half degrees. And that is the sole reason why this value right here is 23 and a half degrees. 
Okay, so let's get back to it. So the angle of inclination from the Earth's orbit or from the Earth's elliptical orbit is 23 and a half degrees. Uh, so because of that phenomenon, we have an unusual thing to think about, which means at some point, the North Pole will be completely tilted towards the sun, like what you're seeing right now. So regions around these blue lines down to the North Pole will continuously, perpetually receive sunlight because that angle of inclination tilts the North Pole towards the sun. So they will always receive daylight. And then while the opposite side, the South Pole, is completely tilted away from the sun, they never get to see the sun for a long time as well. We're going to get a little more into that. But here's the point I'm trying to make already. Is that at some point, when we are tilted closer to the sun, or when the North Pole is tilted closer to the sun, we receive too much light, we receive too much heat, and that causes a change in the atmospheric temperature and in the weather phenomena that, would, that we experience during that time of the year. All this will become clearer as we proceed in the class. But here's another thing I also want you to know. As the North Pole is tilted towards the sun in this diagram here, the South Pole is tilted away from the sun. So whatever is happening in the North Pole, the opposite is happening in the South Pole. Okay? That information is going to be useful. Whatever is happening in the Northern Hemisphere, the opposite is happening in the Southern Hemisphere. Okay, so we have this lovely diagram. So since the Earth's axis is tilted 23 and a half degrees away from the Earth's elliptical orbit, this is what it would look like as we revolve around the sun. So you have that little Earth axis right there indicated by that little line there at the top and at the bottom. So somewhere around this area, let's start from here, we see that the North Pole is tilted away from the sun. So during this time, the region right here around the Northern Pole will perpetually be in darkness, sometimes up to six months of complete darkness, not even seeing the sun at all. While the opposite is true for the South Pole, the regions around the South Pole are perpetually seeing the sunlight continuously. So it doesn't day and night there, it's just day and day and day and day. And then that varies as you move towards the equator as well. And as you see that during this region, more of the northern hemisphere is tilted away from the sun. While here, at, while we are at this position, completely half of the earth is facing the sun and the other half is facing away from the sun. Half into the sun, half away from the sun. And at this point in time, uh, the northern hemisphere is now tilted towards the sun and then the southern hemisphere is the opposite as well. So those times of the year where you have the pole tilted towards the sun or tilted away from the sun, we call those periods solstice. So during this region here, this that is a solstice. And that means this guy here would also be a solstice. Where here, again, half of the earth, exactly half, is facing the sun, and the other half is facing away from the sun. So because it is equal, we'll use that word equinox for these regions. Okay, so during this time of the year, everywhere on earth receives almost exactly 24 hours of day and 24 hours of light. And for that reason, they are called equinoxes. Okay. Sounds fun, right? Let's go one more round. Let's go one more round, all right? Okay, so since we are in the Northern Hemisphere, especially those of us in North America and for us here in New York, we are in the Northern Hemisphere. And since around this region, we are tilted away from the sun, the Northern Pole is tilted away from the sun, that means we don't receive much of sunlight. Our day, our nights will be longer, okay? And then temperature, temperatures would drop as well because we don't receive enough heat from the sun during this period. So what season does that remind you of? Take a guess, take a guess, take a guess, take a guess. Winter. So for that reason, for that reason, we're going to call this particular solstice winter solstice. Okay. And if that is winter solstice, as we move, we know the earth moves in a anticlockwise direction around the sun. 
So as we move from winter, what season do we get into? Winter? What season do we move to? Winter eyes melting into spring, for those of you who are sound of music. Winter eyes melting into spring. Okay, so we call that equinox, spring equinox. And from spring, what season do we head to? We head to the summer. So for that reason, we're gonna call that solstice, summer solstice. And lastly, of course, we'll have the four equinox. It's getting interesting. Can we go one more round? Yeah, we can. So what month of the year do you think this is? Okay, if you remember in school, we take our winter break around December. Okay, that is just the beginning of the season. So, right around that period where the northern hemisphere, the northern pole is seated slightly away from the sun, where temperatures are cold, it starts to snow, the nights are longer, the days are shorter, we correct our time and all that stuff. That sounds like December to me. That's when we take our Christmas, our Christmas break and we take our winter break, right? That's December. And since it's four seasons or since it's four position around the year we can divide 12 months in the year divided by four and that's going to give us an average of three months so three months from december what would that be when does spring begin for us take a guess take a guess take a guess of course in march all right and then Three months later, we're moving into the summer. And three months, June, that is when we take our summer break, if you recall. And lastly, September for fall. Okay, so these are the basic things that we want you to understand. It is the Earth's inclination, the Earth's axis inclination on its orbit that actually results in this phenomenon, why some parts of the Earth are tilted away from the sun and are at some time of the year and during other times of the year some part are tilted towards the sun and don't forget whatever is happening in the northern hemisphere the opposite is happening in the southern hemisphere we'll explain that with the next diagram okay so take this piece of information and then we're going to bring all these and summarize with this final slide that we have here okay so we have the sun here and then let's begin here again we're going to begin from uh, December and winter. Now, during this period, as we said, the northern pole is tilted slightly away from the sun, which means the northern hemisphere is tilted slightly away from the sun. Less daylight, longer nights, temperatures drop, it snows, it's, it, it's cold. So, during that period, we can say the northern hemisphere, that is the equator, the northern hemisphere will be experiencing winter. So why it is winter in the Northern Hemisphere? What do you think is happening in the Southern Hemisphere? The Southern Hemisphere is opposite. The South Pole is tilted towards the sun. They receive more daylight. They receive more heat. The days are longer. The nights are shorter. So why it is winter in the Northern Hemisphere? It is summer in the Southern Hemisphere. So whatever is happening in the South, in the North Pole or in the Northern Hemisphere, the opposite is happening in the southern hemisphere all right and then we move straight to spring now during this region or during this winter we see that the sun is directly overhead at the tropic of capricorn all right the sun is not hitting the equator the sun is hitting the tropic of capricorn which was the line we started at the beginning of the class as we move into spring we see that the sun is now hitting directly at the equator so because the sun is directly at the equator and every part of the earth is receiving equal heating and equal warming uh we call that region an equinox okay so we call that spring equinox if you remember and that is also around march now during that period we in the northern hemisphere will be experiencing spring because it is spring in the northern hemisphere the opposite which is fall or autumn will be true for the southern hemisphere not hemisphere experiencing spring southern hemisphere experiencing fall and then we move to this region during june during june the opposite now happens we are tilted towards the sun we get more daylight we get more heat days are longer nights are shorter for that reason we are in summer we're getting enough heat now so if the northern hemisphere is experiencing summer then the southern hemisphere this region will be experiencing winter 
Why? Because the south pole is tilted away from the sun. You get the logic now. And the same repeats itself here during the fall equinox as well. Um, the we in the northern hemisphere will be experiencing fall, while those in the southern hemisphere will be experiencing spring. And that repeats itself again. And that, my friend, is the reason why we have uh, seasons on Earth. Let's take water for the road, and I'll see you guys outside. Bye for now.